Hello and welcome to the Car Kirana channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how Toyota's trucks four-wheel drive system works. Now this video is part of my series on the 4Runner. We took a technical deep dive, if you would, on the 4Runner to find out how ancient it is and why is it so reliable. But in this video, I wanted to step aside from the series for a bit because this four-wheel drive system in the 4Runner is actually almost exactly the same as all other Toyota trucks. So this includes your Tacoma, your Tundra, Sequoia, Land Cruiser, and on the Lexus side, the GX and the LX. So we're gonna take a deep dive into the four-wheel drive, talk basically how it works, following my channel's theme. We're gonna keep things simple because they're actually a lot more complicated than they seem in this video. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Without further ado, let's go check this four-wheel drive system out. So the four-wheel drive system on Toyota trucks. There are mainly two kinds, and within these two kinds, there are two other kinds. Let's start from the beginning. So there is full-time all-wheel drive with low range and locking diff. And then there is just four-wheel drive part-time, if you would. So basically one of them is has four low, four high. It does not have the ability to go into rear wheel drive only. The part-time four wheel drive has the ability to go into two wheel drive and four wheel drive and then four low. Now let's talk about the components that comprise this system. So there is the front differential. From the front differential there are two axles. Each of them go to each of the front wheels. There is a prop shaft that goes from the front differential to the transfer case. Now the transfer case mounts to the back of the transmission, directly just mates to the transmission and it directly connects to the output shaft of the transmission. Now from the transfer case, there is another drive shaft that goes to the rear differential. So those are the big bulk components, if you would. Electronically, there is a four wheel drive computer, if you wanna call it that, because it's really not a very sophisticated computer. You can't even communicate with it, for example. It doesn't put codes unless you're talking 16 and up Tacoma, which was the first one, and some of the very newest ones. But most of them, they were so ancient, they didn't even have codes. Diagnosis was a nightmare because you had to check our voltages everywhere. So after the computer is when we come to the two kinds, two different possibilities within the part-time four-wheel drive system. You have one that has a manual shifter that shifts between two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and low range. And then you had one that had the buttons. They're very similar in operation, just small differences because of the shift manual shifter or the button. Let's focus first on the part-time four-wheel drive. So in the front of in the front differential, there is a motor that locks the front differential. It connects it and disconnects it. And what that is called is the ADD, automatic disconnecting differential. If you remember in the olden days, we used to have the hubs that you needed to lock. And the reason for that is you can't spin that center drive shaft and that whole differential for nothing. So they wanted to disconnect it so it's not spinning the transfer case as you drive in two-wheel drive mode. So the ADD actuator, it is electronically controlled by the computer. It just actuates a little actuator that moves a fork that locks and unlocks the, the differential to the prop shaft. So when you're in two-wheel drive, the axles are spinning because they're being spun by the wheel, but the differential inside is not connected to the prop shaft or the drive shaft coming out of the differential to the transfer case. It's just 
sitting idling there. Now, in the transfer case, of course, the transfer case has a planetary gear and a whole operation going, but we're going to keep things simple with the transfer case. All the transfer case needs to do is transfer the power to the front wheels and pass power through to the rear wheels. Now, it also does another function. It houses the center differential, and we'll talk about that in a bit. And it also has the planetary gear for the reduction. That's what makes your low range possible. On the transfer case, in models that do not have the manual shifter, they have an actuator. That actuator is responsible for engaging four wheel drive, basically start sending power to the front wheels or not send power to the front wheels. And then it also controls the center lock differential. On models that has just the manual shifter, not, not the button, they don't have that actuator because you're doing that when you shift the, the transfer case manually with the manual shifter. Now let's talk about the, these are the basic, basic bare bone components of the transfer case. We're keeping things simple. So here's what happens when you shift from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. The first thing you do, let's talk about the button one because the shifter, the manual shifter happens a lot quicker. But let's talk about the electric one first so you can see how the manual is a little simpler. So you shift the button from two wheel drive to four wheel high. High means we're not in low range, we're not creating reduction in using the planetary. So when you switch to H4 or four wheel drive high, the first thing that's gonna happen is the actuator on the transfer case is going to turn. It's going to first engage the 2-4 fork. That changes from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. Now the front prop shaft is spinning. And then the front ADD actuator locks. And the way the computer is, is kind of following this sequence, look, this is an ancient computer that all it does is looks at voltages and goes in a sequence. So I wouldn't really call it a computer, I would call it a sequencer. It's looking at a series of micro switches inside the transfer case that tell it, okay, this fork moved here, it reached the end of the limit, and it tells it its exact position. When this fork reaches here, move to operation two, move this fork, wait for it, it moved here, okay, now let's move on to the next operation. So when it sees all the voltages got to the right place because all these micro switches gave it the right voltages so now the computer knows okay well my transfer case is now where i want it to be where now we're engaging the front prop shaft two four fork has moved and the center diff is locked now let's activate our add to lock the front differential not lock the differential itself just engage it so now after the transfer case is done the add will engage and now the front wheels are spinning do you see how that whole th operation happens it does that if you notice on these trucks if you engage it you're gonna actually hear first thud and then a second thud so when you have a manual shifter like the forerunner like the forerunner behind me it has a manual shifter for the transfer case the minute you start moving that shifter there's a switch that detects that you're moving it and it locks the add or the front differential before we move on to the full-time four-wheel drive, I want to point out one very common limitation of this system, if you would, because it's so ancient. If the actuator on the transfer case is moving and you shut off the car, there's a certain point where the actuator is halfway between two shifts. It's like starting to move the fork, this switch disengaged, and this switch has not engaged yet to tell the computer we're actually finished the shift. It'll go into limbo, and then the, the flashing light will continue to flash and nothing will happen and people will will be like well, what's what happened with this thing all you did was shut off the car halfway through the shift folks this system has limitations and this is one of them if you unplug the four-wheel drive computer while it's operating you it goes into a limbo where it really does not know where everything is at and it doesn't do anything it just locks out and sits down and it's like okay i don't like this the only way to resuscitate this system if you would is to go to the actuator hot wire it to bring things back one way or the other so it picks up the location and now it knows what's going on it's just a limitation of that and i thought i'd bring it up to your attention and that by the way is the same thing with the add and another limitation of the system is when you don't use it in five years and then all of a sudden, oh, let's switch it on. 
these motors, they seize and the sleeve that moves is notorious to seize if you leave it. So it's really advisable that every month switch the thing back and forth, low, high, all positions safely and then bring it back even if you're not using it for in four wheel drive. I wanted to briefly talk about the center locking diff and the rear locking diff on the models that are equipped. On the models with center locking diff, the shift actuator on the transfer case will have a second fork that engages that. But the only difference about that one's operation is when we engage 2-4 before the ADD engages, it'll actually engage center locking diff, switch on the ADD, then back out of the center lock. That's the way that one works. And then the models with the rear locking diff, it'll just have a similar motor sitting on the differential that just locks the rear differential and then unlocks it. Very simple operation. Before moving on to the full-time four-wheel drive, let's talk about the low range. What happens in the low range? Now, when you demand for low range, whether with the shifter or with the electronic, that shift actuator, or in the case of the manual, you're just moving into another position, it's gonna change the power flow of the planetary, where now you have gear reduction, the center lock engages, the traction control shuts off because that violent shaking of the traction control could really damage things. At this point, the truck, you know how four-wheel four drive low range is. There is high reduction and it's only meant for, four, for basically off-roading. You can't really drive in the street with it because you can't go high speed. You're going to damage a lot of things. You're going to hear the big whining from the transfer case because now it is causing a reduction so basically you have a very small gear turning very fast, turning a very large gear, creating high torque, but you really will have to rev the engine and the transmission very high to gain any speed. It's meant to create en enormous amounts of torque. So it gets you off out of those uh, sticky situations in off-roading, if you would. That's the only purpose of the low range. In normal driving, you really can't use it. Even four-wheel drive, it gets a little clunky and as you make sharp turns, things kind of are not smooth. And the reason they are not smooth is what they're gonna, what's going to take us to the full-time four-wheel drive. Well, how, how did they figure this out? And remember, the part-time four-wheel drive on most models is limited to around 60 miles an hour. They don't recommend you going faster than 60 miles an hour in four-wheel drive. full-time all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive actually the only difference between them they're very identical they still have everything that we've talked about except there's no ADD in the front the front differential is always connected it's always turning the prop shaft but the difference is in the transfer case so the transfer case has a limited slip differential it has actually a torsion limited slip differential. So when you make turns, when you go higher speeds and the, the, all the differences in the speeds, that center differential will allow the front and the back to spin at different speeds and it just makes everything operate safer, more smoothly. And that's what actually allows the full-time four-wheel drive. Everything else operates exactly the same. When you shift from four high, or you're always in four high in this mode, to low range, again, it's gonna move that actuator, engage, change the power flow, and now you're in low range. And it'll have a center differential lock where you can engage it at any time. Folks, this video makes the system sound very simple. However, it is simple, but it is complicated, and trust me, when these things go south, they are very difficult to diagnose because you have all these wires going from the actuator and all its position and limit switches all the way to the computer. So when, in the case of diagnosis, and I wanna give you this if you're DIY, if you wanna understand why these things sometimes have problems and they're difficult to figure out, you have to follow a chart, measure exact wires, voltages, to see where everything is at and then compare that voltage to a preset voltage in the repair manual. It'll just tell you all these wires, all these position switches and limit switches will have normal voltages, either zero or 12 or whatever the case may be. 
in certain shift positions and you're going to compare your actual readings from the car to the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, four high, four low, all the different possible positions. So you'll know which component of all of these, all these two actuators or all the other switches, position switches, is the problem. And, and like I told you, most of these will get stuck. Either they've been seized and you move them, they go into that limbo mode where it goes in between and the computer is kind of like counting, okay, I am moving my actuator, but I don't see it going and it gets to a point where it's not two-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive, it's just nothing in between. It's showing voltage for both at the same time and the computer looks at that and goes, uh, okay, I don't know. 2003 is calling, I don't know what's going on. By the way, the system goes back all the way to 2003 it's ancient, folks. There is no other word for it. It's ancient. It's actually a little older than that in other models, but in the Forerunner, it goes all the way back to 2003 to 2021 on the all-wheel drive. Folks, these systems are bulletproof unless you let them cease by not using them for a very long time or somebody is tampering with them. And the first rule of diagnosis with these systems is Four wheels off the ground, car in drive, and you see what's going on. Is the front drive shaft spinning? Is your differential in the front locked? What's going on? That's how you start knowing what's actuated and what's not before you measure your voltages. And most of the time, all it takes is manually actuating, finding which wires go to the actuator for the motor and just forcing it one way or the other. Just move it a little bit and it'll engage again because now you moved it past that gray zone in the middle where it doesn't know what's going on. You moved it into an area where it knows and immediately the light stops flashing and the computer is happy and life is good. Folks, the system is simple but not simple if you know what I mean. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope now you get a better idea of how this whole mess works, if you would, and what are the differences between the three possible options, if you would, with this system. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. Also, if you want to catch up on the series on the forum, I will leave the link for that right here. And until the next video, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.